Have you ever just bought a pet goldfish as a kid just because you thought it'd be super cool to have a pet? And when you brought it home, you'll just admire it for hours. And then the next day, it dies. Well, you either do two things after you gave it a proper funeral, hopefully. Flushing it down the toilet, or if you're my dad, bury it with the plants. Because it's awesome fertilizer. But to put that aside, I'm just here to give recognition on how we bury the dead. Listen, I'm not here to disrespect the dead, but I'm just pointing out errors that may affect us in the near future. And by that, I mean now. The way we dispose the dead is actually really harmful to the environment, starting off with a classic burial. If you put the definition of a traditional burial into a nutshell, it's basically dropping a body full of formaldehyde in a non-biodegradable casket deep within the ground, similar to how we store our radioactive waste within the earth. Burials waste natural resources, and putting this in terms of data that were taken in 2020, it shows that we're using over 30 million board feet of hardwoods, 90,000 tons of steel and copper, and 1.6 million tons of reinforced concrete for vaults. Not to mention the amount of embalming fluid for the bodies was at 4 million gallons, and these happen yearly. I also looked up the amount of deaths in 2020, and it was about 59.23 million. So, I took the extra mile and looked up how much land it takes for a burial and trusted sources says 1250 per acre, which means in 2020 it took up 47,384 acres of more land just to bury the dead. Also to add is that burials are really expensive and once a body is in the ground, it stays there forever. Well, let me tell you what cremation does on our environment. Though considerably cheaper, it is equally environmentally worse, and perhaps even worse, sir, than burial. Is that a word? Think of air pollution. We're burning a body around 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and one cremation is estimated to use the same amount of fuel as a car that drives 4,800 miles. So that's from Gainesville to LA and back. You could do one trip, one full car ride. With one cremation. <laughs> cremation does release carbon into the atmosphere as well as adding mercury to the wonderful mix. From anti dental fillings or denti dental fillings or medical devices. Well, cremation and burial are the most popular methods to rest the dead. So what now? How can we be environmentally friendly now? Well here are some solutions. You can have a green burial where you are placed in a biodegradable coffin or material that takes only a year to decompose as well as your body. Or you could go through the costly method and go through alkaline hydrolysis where you are chemically broken down into a liquid and bone and this leaves your bones which could be turned into ashes similar to cremation. And there you could be turned into a diamond or put into an hourglass to have the body of your dreams but also waste everybody's time. I know people are very sensitive about death and picky on how they want to be preserved, but we should also consider the next generation so they don't have to deal with our corpse. Imagine trying to build a house if you can because all the land is just for the dead generation before you. Eventually, in the meantime, all the land is going to be used up for the dead and not for the living, and that doesn't sound right. Well, in my opinion, of course.